En nu een vrolijk viertal dat het ouderwetse sokkenbal nieuw leven inblaast. Volgende week pas op Pinkpop, nu al bij de VPRO. De Red Hot Chili Peppers. Squeeze your balls. going so far? Well, it's going pretty good, except right now we're stuck on the side of the road in Switzerland because the emergency's not working and the guy that's driving called up somebody to come help us. So now we're just sitting here. Uh, how was Germany? You've been... Uh... Germany was wunderbar, you know what I mean? But how did you got, go down uh, musically? How would the... Uh... Musically speaking, I'd say we go down in history. Really? Every show was sold out. As far as Germany's concerned, yeah. we're the best band in the world. 
that Germany, you know, they told us when we left that we were the best band that they'd ever seen live. And we believe them. So what are you saying now? That he was so important for you, or Sly, Sly Stone? He's still is, yeah. He still is. I mean, I've been, I've been, I felt so low so many times, and um, I've heard Sly and just cried, cried, cried it out because I think his music is like Bible music. It's it's immaculate. It, it, it's holy. It's, it's perfect almost. It's, really? It's, well, it's just pure soul. It's just it's deep. That music, you don't have to even think about it. It just, it, it'll move you, you know. Yeah, that, that's, I that's, mean, that, 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 that shit is emotional music. I mean, you don't even have to think about how you feel. You just feel it when you feel it. You know, you're either going to cry or you're going to, like, feel it, think about how much you love your mother or you, how much, you know, you love your best friend or, you know, how much you hate life or whatever. You don't even have to analyze it. That guy just will move you in and out the door mm -hmm. with his music. funny because we were just joking about earlier how we're gonna sit around and be corny and go what influence is and this whole concept of the shoot but that's like what he just did right there is like you know i mean i did not even realize it i realized it so much more like right at this very second how much i like copy that shit all the time <laughs> you know i mean it's like that whole feel of bass playing you know yeah. there's no one boots he's the only one that ever did it you know and the only one that ever will yeah. you know <laughs> George is all skinny and silly that. <laughs> oh God! Don't <laughs> <laughs> snow man on drums. George is just like the baddest motherfucker, man. He's just, he's like his whole concept of music, for one thing, he's like totally into the cartoon thing, you know, and it comes out, and it's like the way that he combined hard rock music with funk, like, I mean, that thing we were just listening to, coming around the mountains, you know, coming around the mountain, like the groove on that is just like, like, 
it's like what Aerosmith like wished they could do, like maybe one day, you know? Like, really? You think so? Uh, definitely. I definitely. Mean, I, so. I, I think so, a million percent. That. I mean, that sounds like to me like you know, like it, so it sounds like it's, it's like a hard rock funk groove, man. And I, and I feel I just feel very akin to it as well. Because it's like they don't, they're not paying attention to anything except themselves. They're not paying attention to anything except, you know, their, their funk. They're not, I mean, it's obvious that shit didn't get radio play. Give me a break. No one played that on the radio. Oh, that, that's, that's the deepest stuff. And I think that's why it's the same kind of thing we fall into. You know, because we play shit that's too funked out to get on white radio and too rocked out to get on black radio. And that's the same thing with that. Good day in a chili pepper life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten interviews, a TV show. Back to the hotel. We get EMI to take us out for dinner. How, how long is each interview? Each interview usually runs about a half hour. Although we're going to try to move it a little quicker today because the guys are tired. They're tired? Tired. They had a wild time last couple of days. Are they, are they tired from those last couple of days or from being on the road for a long time already? Um, I, they usually recoup when we have a day off, but it's been a little bit hectic. I think this being the first time over in Europe, the excitement and everything else, and it was early for them. You know, 6.30 in the morning, early. I have a, a permanent fear that, that my girlfriend would do the same thing to me, and that no matter how much I have, says she loves me. I call her up on the phone and she says she's been faithful. All those times that you know, like I've like, broken my own mind. Yeah, that's cool. But you and my own, it's different. It's kind of new. You really have to. You're thinking more of the past. You're what? witnessing me on one of the worst mornings of my life. What? Saddest, most emotional yeah. morning of my life. Oh, uh, now it I could be worse. Someone way. could have died. I play the bass in your face to make you want to check off. I know I would. I know I would. I play the bass in your face to make you want to check off. Little cock and balls for you, perhaps? <laughs> I'll show you mine, but mine's too small. I've been gravely insulted and humiliated. And uh, <coughs> my heart's broken, so what the fuck? What happened, man? Oh. Uh, Yes. Pay some terms. My man, she said, I, she said I broke her heart too many times, so it's time to go. I'm not trying to sound like a manager going like, oh, I got the greatest band in the world, yada, yada. But musically, they can outplay just about anybody. The same as Hendrix and The Who and The Cream and Led Zeppelin did at that time. That's where I make the comparison. And the fact that they were doing something that was new musically. They were really stepping out instead of just your, you know, da 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 da, da shuffle or whatever it is. The Peppers are doing that. Other musicians and kids watch them and just are like in awe of how Jack plays drums, how Fleet plays bass. I mean, nobody plays like Fleet. What Hillel does with his guitar, I mean, Hillel, and Hillel's using a lot of what those musicians use, the wah-wah pedal. People don't use wah-wah pedals. They've all got these crazy high-tech little, you know, boxes they hit and they fix the guitars explode. 50. When you played in Fear, yeah. what was the difference between playing in Fear and with a band like Well, Chili playing with Fear had all the energy that the Chili Peppers had, but it was punk rock. And when I was playing with Fear, I was going like this most of the time. You know, it's more like a
got all the same energy, but it's just a whole different feel. When, when, do you, when you go on stage, do you become a different person? I mean, does something actually change? No, I, I don't change personally. I just try to, like, really, you know, it's my time to give everything that I have. When I'm not on stage, I can relax. I don't have to do anything for anybody. But when I'm on stage, it's my responsibility to, like, you know, summon up all the energy that I have to rock out. Letting the booty juices flow? Yeah, the booty juices have to flow. You just have to let all those booty juices and just, you know, everything, all the juices have to flow. It has to be a constant, relentless, you know, digging deep into the booty of funk. Jack, what does it take to be the drummer uh, for a band like the Chili Peppers? Um, well, it takes many years, many moons. Yeah. Uh, it takes a lot of, see the sweat? Can you see it still? Yeah. That's just a little sound check. It takes a lot of work at a show. It takes being in shape. Uh, it takes patience when your girlfriends want to break your heart when you're thousands of miles away. Right. Patience. And what does it take uh, technically, drum technically? Technically? Well... Can you, can you show us something like I will show you a few exciting things. Okay, please. Now, it has nothing to do with anything, but here's one exciting thing. Ready? Yeah. It's very simple. All right? That's, that's something that I've practiced a lot. I don't do it as good as I used to, probably. I don't know. But when I was studying, I practiced my double stroke rolls. See, so when you get it going. Like that. Right. See? So that's a rhythm, that's a pattern that you actually use oh, a lot. Oh, that's a drum cadence. I'll show you. Yeah. I use the bass drum to accent the accents. Right. And when I was in high school and we did the drum cadence in marching band, I figured the guy, if you could actually do the whole drum cadence with your hands and feet, You'd be the slickest guy in high school. There was no doubt about it. But I could never pull it off till like years after I graduated. So here I go.
music to me is heavily related to sex. Um, not always, but in, in many different fashions, especially in funk, when you create rhythm with the bass and drums, it sounds like your heart pounding when you're having sex or like, you know, like the skin slapping. Or, there's all kinds of different things. We have a song called Sex Rap, and it's exactly how music relates sound to sex. How's it go? It goes like this, it goes. A time to swing a little melody to make y'all feel something sexually. And now we're gonna get it on in the groove. The groove that makes those smooth hips move. We are funkin' that driving bed rhythm to make those pretty little pussy lips kiss em. Kiss em, kiss em, kiss em. In the mind, this was designed to make you feel fine sucking on mine in a 69. I'm inclined to funk, 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 funk your brains out. Make a moan, make a groan, and make a shout. Push it on in and pull it on out. Pump that labby until it pouts. Well, open up your legs to the sensual sound. With the booty busting beat on your pretty wet mound. I can smell your nook, you're like a horny bloodhound. Feel the bass, hump the ground as you drop into your knees and on bound but now you make your mouth and get on down and it goes on and on and how music and sound relates to sex my love comes and when it does it's a crazy time oh so much perfection my love comes like a wild dog and oh a direction my love projection my love direction You better get some of my affection I love to be a bit of a The groove is damn My love can have my A rain of sand My love for life is to abide The love for my man My love is for the air The ceiling is the man The people think he's there But don't be glad to laugh What's my share? Well, it was a grand show, and the show is over. This is what happens after a show. Hello, David. You're What? Give a good crotch shot for the camera. Cool, no, no, no. Camera wants a crotch shot. So, Hillel, how was Paris? Paris is wonderful. I didn't really get a chance to see the Eiffel or the Louvre. But I did get a chance to go to a nightclub after the show, and uh, I did see an old friend, and I did have a good sleep. How much? Did, so how much did you actually see of Paris? Not not enough, not enough. But um, I, I did see a really good crowd that rocked out. They rocked the fuck out. So uh, did you actually hit it off with the lady in black last night, or what? No, she was just an old friend. I was an old friend. No? Yeah. Let's say all some of the, the silly stuff that the band and you do. What what does it stand for? Stand for what, what, it stands for spontaneity. It stands for like the way the way we feel at that time. Spontane, spontaneity. Yeah. It's it's. I think I think like on tour, a lot of like the like ridiculous uh, anarchistic stuff that we do is just a release. Because on tour is a very good place to you build up a lot of uh, strange energies, and they're usually good strange energies. But sometimes they're like kind of mysterious strange energies so you know that that's one way i think that we all four of us just 
You know what I mean? And then you film the, the actual filming. It would be a really nice contrast. Yeah, let, let, let it be known for you guys to say. For the, the run-throughs, it's going to be straight. For the actual film, it's going to be Ten seconds, attention. Ten seconds, attention. Attention. Nice job you're doing here, Chris. Oh, thank you. That's yeah, one of the true pleasures I get out of life. Why do, why do the pedals have to be uh, taped so tightly to the stage? Oh, well, because they get kicked quite often. Uh, it, makes it makes it nice so they don't slide around on the floor. You know? When Hallel tries to play, I mean. Uh-huh. For how long have you been with the band, actually? Off and on for about two years or so. Before that, you were with uh, other bands? Do you work with other bands? Uh, yeah, quite a few different bands. When you see the Peppers play, uh, don't you wonder sometimes for how long they'll be able to go on like this? No, not really. Uh, I, I think they're pretty, uh, they're pretty sincere about what they're doing. And I do believe they enjoy what they're doing, so... Nobody seems to be getting tired of it yet. Mm -hmm. you know, myself included. So. I think they'll. I think they'll have a band with a lot of longevity. They have a success formula. You know, they, they get along well. They they play well. The material's good. And you know, like I say, the reaction to reaction from the audience is very well. It's everywhere they go. And it's kind of like a, if you were like a horse breeder, you know, or something like that. And I've seen many, you know, seen horses that win races and horses that lose races, you know, all your life. This happens to be one of those bands that look like they're going to win it. to stay away from really ad highly advanced stuff for some reason. No reason in particular, but for some reason. Let's see. Uh, this is my Wawa. <laughs> like, like I use a black eye blonde. Yeah. A gnarly box that I have is a Super Fuzz that I got from a friend. It has very... <laughs> I usually use an MXR, the 
outsourcing, but that broke in the beginning of tour because I think beer was spilling on it. So this is just your old drive. And this is just an old chorus. <laughs> Are you doing an interview? Yes. With, without me? There's a concert poster of yours in a in a record shop in Antwerp and it has Shut up! Don't you dare it has the it has the the concert poster and next to that several types and uh, of socks and it has the big letters on it dressing room. Wearing socks on our cocks and balls? Yeah. Trying try, try, try to pr trying to promote our band? Yeah. Putting posters up so people know that we exist? Yeah. Crazy. That's bananas. <laughs> That's bananas. At the beginning, there were a lot of misunderstandings about the band. People thought you were black, for instance. Well, that's a ridiculous notion. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, how black are the chili peppers? How Did black are we? Yeah. I've got, the, I've got the darkest penis in the band, but aside from that, we're all Caucasian individuals. But that has no bearing on our music, so it's rather irrelevant. What he's really trying to say is that the Beastie Boys are our heroes, and we just try to copy them as, exactly as best as we can. <laughs> and that's not uh, going so well. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, he tries to play his guitar exactly like they program mm -hmm. their computers and their, their, their drum machines. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? In other words, the Beastie Boys are our heroes. And what he's trying to say is... <laughs> Now that, you know, especially, you know, we got to the, getting to the five-year point, we definitely have to grow, you know, because we've been doing it for so long. We basically, I mean, we've, you know, we've changed and grown. And I think, you know, our, especially on our last album, I thought we made a big jump, you know. I, I mean, but uh, just to keep ourselves interested, you know, and to keep ourselves happy, you know, not burn out, not become, you know, jaded about it, we definitely have to grow. But it must be difficult to still still keep that energy oh, yeah. from the very beginning. No, it's definitely difficult. You know, it's difficult because so much of it relies on friendship. So much of it relies on, you know, the fact that we're all together all the time. It's like, you know, four guys and the same man on generality is like four guys fucking, eating, shitting, sleeping, traveling, being right next to each other all the time, constantly. And it gets hard. And there's nights when we go out there when we're fucking tired, you know, we played like... Our last tour we did like 18 gigs straight, you know, and after 10 gigs, you know, in a row and traveling, you know, all day, every day, getting there, playing, traveling all day, playing, you know, the same routine, restaurant, hotel, gig, van, restaurant, hotel, gig, van. Interviews. You get, yeah, interviews, you know, the whole thing, you get really burnt out. And uh, sometimes, you know, I know I go up there and I don't feel like playing, you know, but I still have to go up there and kick ass, you know, because it's my job. Last night I slept with Flea, and in the middle of the night I found him holding my hand. Really? Seriously. Ah, oh, that's nice. Didn't bother me, but, you know, there he is right there. <laughs> I, the, the night before, when Chris and I were in the skinny beds together, in the middle of the night, Chris Grayson sort of rolled over and had his hand there. And he started going like this, I go, oh, man, I ain't your girlfriend, bro. And he so oh, Grayson did that to me once yeah, in the fucking night. That's right, he tried to, but the night you, you tried to sexually abuse me in the RV when you were asleep. What about the night you sexually abused yourself and everybody else? Oh, no, because yeah, yeah, I remember that one. First I do these scales up and down just to get my fingers going, to get those muscles, get the blood inside of the muscles. I was taught to warm up like this by spit sticks. The drummer from Fear taught me how to warm up. Me, I was born warm. Okay, anyways, like I was saying before, here's a love song that we wrote for the Dykes in Holland.
it's just, you know, we're just having fun. So we're just trying to have a good time. Mm. I mean, we're very serious about having fun because that's what it's all about for us. You know, it's getting off on the music. And that's the whole thing, about the whole funk thing, you know, it's just like, we play it, you know, it's funner than hell. You know, when you strike that groove, you know, some nights it's not as good as others. Sometimes there'll be moments, you know, magic moments. But like when it's happening, you know, when everything is on the one, everybody's together and we're all like just, you know, there's nothing like it. And, uh, you know, that's what we live for is that one time. You know, there's nothing like it when I know just like when I hit the bass, hit a note and Jack hits the bass drum or whatever and it's right together, you know, like one. You know, there's nothing like it. And it's just like a really good feeling. I'm 